Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to design a simply supported beam using TechLightHide software. So let's start. So I'm going to run the program. So as you can see, there's this new window which is opened. So it gives me the options of uh, what exactly I want to design. So for today, we're going to design a simply supported beam. So I'm just going to go to this folder beams, click on that. And as you can see, the variety of code of standards on how to design a simply supported beam. So we'll go for the BS8110. So this, since this is usually the go-to code to the, according to the Kenya standard. So I'm going to select RC beam analysis and design, calculate. Now this window pops up. So once that is the case, you just go to geometry. So in the geometry window, here is where we define the spans and the support conditions. So let's say, for example, we want to design a simply supported beam of 4.5 meters. So that in millimeters is 4,500. For the support conditions, as you can see, it's already pinned. So this is the default support conditions pinned. But let's say if you want to design your beam as a fixed support, with a fixed support system, sorry, you just go to rotational and change from free to restrained. And as you can see, it automatically changes from simply supported to fixed. The same goes for support B. The same from simply supported pinned to fixed. But uh, for this tutorial, we're just going to design it as a simply supported, which is pinned. So free, free. That is that. So click OK. When you go to loading, so this is where we're going to uh, put up our loading, our dead and live loads. So for that, I'm just going to click on add load. So we have the full UDL. So definitely a, a uniformly distributed load throughout the span of the beam. So under dead, let's say uh, we are designing a floor which has a thickness of one millimeter, 150 millimeter thick. So for that, I'm just going to open my calculator, put in bracket. So I'm going to put 24, which is the unit weight of concrete, multiplied by the thickness, which is 150. So that 0 0.15, giving us a uh, total load of 3.6. So bear in mind, this is kilonewtons per square meter. So we've changed from cubic meters, kilonewtons per cubic meter to kilonewtons per square meter. And to do that, you have to multiply the unit weight by the concrete thickness. So that is that. Plus a partition load of, let's say, 3 kilonewtons per square millimeters. Sorry, kilonewtons per square meter. Plus a finishing load of, let's say, 1.5 kilometers per square meter so once that is the case you get a total load of 8.1 kilometers per square meter but if you look at the software it's asking us to put the load in kilonewtons per meter so to go about that we'll multiply the 8.1 by the effective width that this beam let's say is carrying so we give an effective width of let's say 1.5 so 8.1 multiplied by 1.5 meters. So it's going to give us 12.15 kilonewtons per meter. So you come to test. Fold your DL. 12.15. So that's the total dead and factored. Now we're going to put the live load. So for TED is usually imposed. But I mean live load, imposed load, variable load. All those are more or less the same. So for TED is imposed load. So let's say we're designing a floor for a residential building. And for residential buildings, we usually have a live load of 1.5. This is according to the British Code of Standards. So 1.5 multiplied by the same effective width that we calculated using the dead load. So 1.5 by 1.5, it gives us 2.25 kilonewtons per meter run. So 2.25. So that's that. Once we're done, we now come to combinations. So the combinations, I'm just going to leave it at that. 
since uh, it's only a single span. If it was maybe more than one span, then maybe I would have added an additional combination. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it like that. So the combination is fine. So moment redistribution. So in this, uh, for now, I'm just gonna leave it here. Since, uh, let's say, I'm just going to be a bit conservative. But if you carefully read the BS-8110 under the, under the clause of concrete, and as you can see here at the top, it also gives you like a tip. So normally, according to the BS code of standards, uh, they say the moment at the center of the support, of the center of the span, is can be reduced by 30%. So you remain with at least 70% of the moment of that section. So that is the minimum. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at zero since uh, I'm being a bit conservative. So that is that. So for the beam and material details, so for the beam details, so this is where we define the beam cross-section. So for, for a small residential building, Normally, we don't require very deep beams, so I'm just going to give a, a depth of 450 millimeters with a width of 200. So this 200 is going to match with, uh, let's say, the partition which is going to be put up in the residential building. So normally, this, uh, this is the standard uh, width of a, of a block. And for the cover to reinforcement, I'm going to put 25 because since this is also the standard. But let's say if you're in a coastal region, then you might be required to increase the cover to reinforcement. But since let's say the project is in Nairobi, I'm just gonna use a thickness of 25 millimeters. For the material details, the concrete class. So the standard concrete class that we use here in Kenya is C2025. So 20 being the aggregate size and 25 being uh, the strength of concrete. The design on reinforced concrete, I'm going to leave it like that. Characteristic yield strength, 500, since this is a ribbed section. But if, let's say, the reinforcements that would be used, would, let's say, were square twisted, then this figure would have changed to 410. But for now, I'm just going to use 500, the same for the shear strength, maximum aggregate size, 20. I'm going to leave it like that. For the design options, I'm just going to leave it that, except for the negative moments, where the moment location, I'm going to locate it at the exact figure as the one provided here for the zone of mid-span shear check, because that is where the normal, the negative moment and the shear, ref the shear forces always act on. So I'm going to change this from 0 0.25 to 0 0.3. Maximum allowables, I'm going to leave it at 30% since that is as per the code. I'm going to click OK. Now, time to design the beam. So I'm going to start with support A. I'm going to click the section design. So you can see no reinforcement required. Although I'm still going to provide minimum reinforcement since we require minimum shear. And for the minimum shear, of course, you need the top and bottom reinforcement to hold that shear reinforcement. For the bottom reinforcement, the area required, as you can see, 117. So I'm going to use, let's say, 212s. Right. So that is that. I can see the shear check is checked. It's OK. I'm going to click OK. When you come to span one, so this is the mid span or rather the reinforcement of the span. So the same for the top, minimum shear reinforcement. Now for the bottom reinforcement, as you can see, it's a bit higher since we have maximum moment at the middle. And the area required is 371. So I'm going to provide two sixteens. That should give us 402. For the shear reinforcement, I'm going to leave it the same. I'm going to click OK. Now for support B. Section design, click, 212s, the same as support A, and 212s here, right, so click OK, and that's about it. Now, uh, for the support, for the bottom reinforcements at the support, 
I'm going to match the one I'm going to match it with the ones provided at the span since uh, we're going to utilize the full length of the beam. So instead of providing different reinforcement bars and diameters, uh, I'm going to change the support for both supports of support A. I'm going to give it two sixteens to match with the one at the mid span. The same for support B, which I'm more or less going to do the same. So 216 as well. Click OK and click finish. So just hold on. Right. So now as you can see, we are getting the uh, analytical detail, or rather the analysis figures provided with the sections and uh, the reinforcement required. So the reason why I like using TES is because, as you can see, the calculations sort of match the hand calculations that would, you would actually do. Like, for example, if you were to do a manual calculation, this is more or less the same thing that you'll be needed to present when you're doing a manual calculations. But the thing with manual calculations, of course, it's time consuming. So the fact that you use TES and it gives you that similar user interface it of course saves you time plus uh, it makes your work very much presentable as desired by let's say when you're submitting your documents at the county uh, at, the, at the county department for approval so thank you so much and uh, i do look forward for the next video cheers